I don't love bleak stories. That's not to say that I don't like tragedy, but stories that acknowledge a state of suffering or despair and then stop at that and call it realism don't really jive with me. Person of Interest is a show antithetical to bleak cynicism. Across five seasons, there's plenty of loss, but it's always counterbalanced by a sense of possibility, of hope, that things may not ever get easier, but that there is meaning in effort and in our connection to other people. That necessary addendum, right? Nothing matters, so all that matters is what we do. And that addendum is nicely nestled within what is a phenomenal episode on its own. Season 4, episode 11, If Then Else. This is one scene for hope, or a sequence of subway simulations. The context of the scene is pretty grim. By this point, Person of Interest has evolved into a modern Greek epic in which two artificial superintelligence gods fight for their worldview through their human agents. The machine, who is referred to as she, and our good guys stand for choice and free will. Team Samaritan believes in a peaceful world guided by our robot overlords. The machine isn't a robot, Sam. In the midpoint of season four, the battle between these AIs and their competing philosophies meet explosively beneath the stock exchange. Team Machine consists of four people. Team Samaritan is a corporate behemoth. So reasonably, there's not a lot of evidence for hope here. Backed into a corner and in a serious time crunch, the machine, our friendly superintelligence, is running simulations to calculate the best course of action. Each simulation she tries reveals snags at every turn, but one sequence in particular quietly develops into a reaffirmation of the show's thesis. And that's Shaw on the subway. Shaw, a self-described sociopath and ex-trained killer, is often the first to be pragmatic rather than idealistic. But she's also risked her life to save a kid, to help John, and biked across a state to help Root in danger. Now, ish, an AI has manipulated a financial crash, and Shaw, on the subway full of devastated people who have lost their savings, needs to retrieve a code from one of the stock market employees aboard to fix it. But as she's about to get the code, one of the passengers threatens to take his despair and turn it into an exploded subway car. Now, there's a puzzle. The machine has two objectives. Retrieve the code, and prevent massive loss of life in the subway car. What follows is a series of simulation attempts. Attempt 1. Shaw can shoot the man and prevent mass casualties, but it'll get her arrested and leave the team without the code. Attempt 2. She can try to talk him down by reminding him that he has something to live for, but that quickly turns back into a spiral and she's forced to shoot him again. The machine tries one more time. How do you talk down a guy in a bomb vest and spare me the jokes? Okay, well, I know a guy in the force, he had it rough. Talked about eating his gun. The one thing he said, he never felt so alone. So how did you convince him that he wasn't? Simple enough question. And the answer's been staring us in the face this entire time. They're not alone, they're in a crowded subway. What do you know about it? I know a lot of people are gonna be hurting here after today. So Shaw prompts the other passengers to share. Everyone on the subway pipes in about what they're suffering, and it's awful. I've been wiped out. I'll be lucky if I can pay my kids tuition, if I make it out of here. My boss just lost his job today, and I got laid off too, and I got three kids to support. I guess I can kiss my pension goodbye. Please stop. There's not necessarily a silver lining. But finally, something works. And we get one of my favorite moments in the show. See, Gary? Life is crap. Welcome to the human race. But the good news is, you're not alone. So with Shaw as her mouthpiece, the machine tries out not just empathy, but an appeal to the shared nature of human experiences, even and especially the worst ones. And it works. The successful simulation catches up with reality, passengers are safe, and Shaw has the code. So, like I said, the prompt for this project was hope. Hope is this malleable concept that I think can easily fall into feeling a little treacly or cliché when it's over-referenced. So I'll do my best to define it my way. Hope is, for me, the addendum to the bleakness. Hope just means there's a point in trying. Over-emotional speeches about hope can feel hollow when unearned, but cynicism can be just as boring and tired. Stories that start and end with, life is crap, period, are just as unrealistic as overly naive hope. 
So it's about that yes and. Yes, life is or can be crap. There's not really a point in pretending otherwise. And, as the scene articulates, the inherent hopelessness of how could anyone possibly understand is easily countered with how could anyone possibly not understand. And that's what we get here. No unnecessary pessimism, nor any empty platitudes. Just a little nudge to look around. A lot of my favorite shows have taken on this kind of subject. That while the isolationism of suffering is easy, it's not necessarily a reflection of reality and that there can be reassurance in just a bit of perspective. And this scene means even more coming from the machine, this AI that can see everything. We feel the confidence of what she's saying because of course she'd have the best perspective. She'd know the commonality of human experiences because she's seen them herself. The machine was built to predict people, but in order to work, we're told, she first had to learn to care about them. And I love how apparent that is here. In the middle of a high-stakes conflict, we watch an AI slow down time to understand human loneliness and to be able to reach out with the right words. And when the machine reveals what she learns at the end of the series, it's an iteration of this very same idea. Life is crap. Welcome to the human race. But the good news is, you're not alone. That's it. That's the whole big secret. Hope is other people. Despair is very isolating, and I think it's very easy to follow that momentum into self-indulgence. Closed off from others who can't possibly understand how we feel. And then, of course, we look around and everyone is actually just like us. At various points, each of the human members of Team Machine has been a believer in their own exceptionalism. That there's some part of them that's essentially unknowable. And then, by virtue of connecting with each other and the people that they help, of course, they're proved wrong. Even what feels like our darkest, messiest places aren't mysterious, uncharted territory. Most of what feels like it sets us apart is actually what deeply connects us to everyone else. Pointedly, then, I think I'll leave you with a couple of stanzas from a spoken word poem shared with me by a very good friend. Whatever you're feeling right now, there's a mathematical certainty that someone else is feeling that exact thing. This is not to say you aren't special. This is to say, thank God you aren't special. I'm not saying you'll find the meaning of life in other people. I'm saying other people are the life to which you provide the meaning. 